morning folks welcome into the lodge in the studio this morning happy new year if you're tuning into this probably that uh, new year's day or, or uh, just after what we're going to talk about today guys is we're going to talk about something that we should be out in the woods um, surveying this time of the year really getting a mindset like we always say right before we grab those chainsaws and just head to the woods getting a mindset on what we're going to do for next year and to me whether that's on my own property and or my client properties one thing that i always stress to everybody is this time of the year what we need to be looking at is like i said how to make things better but the probably the pinnacle of how to make your hunt better right is to create more daylight movement there are just some some thing key things that i see each and every time that i feel take a property and actually force uh i don't want to you know knock that nocturnal word Kind of can get out of troll a little bit with uh, with uh, with uh, you know what comes with that, but making a property you know dark movement um, and seventy five percent dark instead of like we're going to talk about today, guys, creating a property that is actually seventy five percent daylight movement, especially during the pre rut in the rut. If we ourselves are seeking these movements when we're hunting, why in the world aren't we building these movements as hunters? for the deer to seek. They're seeking these movements. We have to build it for them. But there are some pinnacle pieces here that I see time and time again. You you have to realize when you're watching this stuff on said outdoor channels, right? Uh, and shows, you have to realize that when folks are sitting on the top of these green, green food sources, let's say, they've probably got large, large amounts of property and they're bouncing between, you know, one 200 acre, one 300, the next is 400, these chunks around our community, which is great for them, right? But you have to put yourself into perspective. Is that realistic? And, and sadly, that's not, not realistic in the common Joes, the you and I's of the world, that's not a common practice that's going to get you 75% daylight movement instead of 75% dark movement. So re remember that it's very region specific, but even in low pressured states, if you manage your property and you set your property up so a deer can feel comfortable whether and, and use high pressured state mentality, high pressure deer mentality, right? If you use those strategies and you are in an area that is parts of Iowa that are, are Kansas, right? That are low pressured, your property is going to turn into a mecca it's very simple so um there there are just like i said some key things here guys we're going to zoom in on the board here this prop this layout right here believe it or not is what i i see now some folks might look at this and say oh that's ridiculous and i can't believe anybody would do that but like i'm saying guys i'm being very honest here i'm being very realistic and and no finger pointing if you're watching this but i'm hoping that maybe this resonates with you because there is just a lot of it out there um, so what we're looking at, you know, we're looking at a square 40 and these uh, orange or dark yellow or orange circles in here are what, you know, folks have been taught to habitat improve, right? Make your habitat improvements in the core, build a better core, make it more secure. Well, build better habitat, you're, if you don't overdo it, right, you probably are making better habitat, right? But it's in the core which is better than being on the outside, but it's in the core. And then what we're doing is these green areas are obviously food plots, right? So we're sitting to the outside. We're not disturbing the core. A lot of your accesses are to the outside, which is great. Sadly, I see a bunch that do go through the centers, um, but we, we uh, are, are kind of grasping the now, you know, the, the strategy, I guess you could say, right? Of, of staying to the outside. The problem with it is guys, these are, sorry for my illustrations, but these are, box blinds on top of the food sources, especially this one right here uh, on the south side of a food plot that runs north and south. So we can hunt that on a north wind and we're on top of the food source. Tree stands on top of these exits would be on top of the food sources, right on top of your food plots. So what this is right here, guys, is you're creating, you're hunting the first. So, so first and foremost, why is this a dark, 75% of dark movement. The, the biggest thing on a property like this is because when you go to enter or 
exit that, especially enter, let's start there. Enter these properties, these stand locations on a 40 acre parcel. You're going to bump these in the morning. You're gonna blow those food sources out. So hopefully they're well screened and, and they're, you know, but in, in as a, as a uh, topic point here, I guess you could say, right, that this, this is how they're built and this is not, there's no screening. There's not a lot of stuff involved on the ones I get to. So you're blowing deer on and off. Just because it's dark doesn't mean that you're not blowing deer on and off from it. Just because it's dark at night and you go to leave the fields doesn't mean that you're not blowing deer off from them, right? Um, so we're sitting here and we're hunting these. If you do get into those locations, um, you know, magic in your pocket and you get in there and you're real lucky that day, uh, you get into those food sources, you're hunting the first half hour of daylight because this is what's happening guys all of your all of your deer are leaving a food source and heading back into bedding right they're already wanting to leave a food source and go back to bedding so the first the, the first alarm the first sound that's made or first truck that pulls in that they're not accustomed to that's where they're all going they're going back to bed so you're actually behind the movement your 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 daylight sightings right are are 50 percent ruined before the hunt even gets started started so that comes with the not seeing deer during the daylight right but the daylight movement that we're speaking of guys is when this is built you're on the outside you get in there in the morning maybe you're hunting this on the food sources or in the evening you get in here and there's so much of this movement you know let's let's just use Let's just use a, uh, this one here. Uh, let's just make say this one was a, a shooting house, right? Um, or a box blind there. Let's, let's say that we're down here and we're hunting a lot of these northern winds, right? The wind's all coming out of the north. North, northwest, wind that day. And we're down here on the south side of the property, which is great strategy, right? Here's the problem. All of these pockets internal that you cut, this is what's going on all these, this buck movement is going on inside of this property. Inside of your 40 acres, all of this, depending on the wind, he's, he's scent checking all of this. This grid is happening the whole time that you're in there. And it could be happening all day long if, if the core of your property is dense enough and you're never going to, to see it, right? So how your daylight daylighting effect on your cameras and stuff that's showing you the pictures is coming into that is you're actually your cameras are out here on your food plots and your food uh, at, at in front of your tree stands and you're not catching any of this movement that's going on inside of the farm yes it's going to happen the doe is going to drag a buck out in those food sources and you're going to get lucky from time to time but it's not a high percentage proficiency uh, situation and those those uh, 75 percent dark movement comes from that because our one our trail cameras aren't placed in the right spot and the pressure adds to that your habitat is is not in the correct places and all of a sudden you start looking at a a uh, property that you're getting 75 percent more dark pictures than you're getting at at uh than you're getting during the daylight and the reason is by the time that they get out here to these food sources now let's go this is a.m right so now let's go to a p.m situation you're sitting here all all afternoon. You get in there one one or two o'clock, sitting over those those green food sources. These deer, if there is any potential for bucks to be bedded inside of your property, which there's probably not, because if you put all the food to the outside and all your habitat is to the core, and now there's very little chance for a buck to even be bedded in there. But if he is bedded in there um, by luck, because this is all going to be doe drama or doe dominated, right? Doe drama. What's going to happen is before that this buck can even come off the neighbor's property over here because he's not allowed to bed you know he's over here on on correct habitat and these does have got his dro drove out here and because of the drama now these does have to go to uh you know we were on this food source here you know so these does have to come out and go to this green food source half hour before dark this buck has got a quarter mile or half mile to get there before he goes. And here you are sitting on this food source, guys. This buck is not going to go directly into that food source in the middle of the daylight and to check all of this habitat or these does. 
where he's going is he's going internal first on a north northwest wind on the downside of all these pockets and starting his whole cruising. So by the time he even gets back out here to this food source and he does walk into that food source, it's going to be dark. Our channel is brought to you in part by these great partners, Painted Arrow Outdoors, Race Proven Performance, Harrodsburg, Kentucky, Drone Deer Recovery, Cutty Back, Bass Pro and Cabela's, Ace Hardware, Harrodsburg, Kentucky. Northwoods Whitetails, your food plot headquarters. Plot Doctor and Harper Growing Solutions. Real Wood Productions. Scent Thief. And Hunt Stand. So, take that one to heart guys because that's a lot. I'm going to say that is 80% of the properties that are designed throughout the Whitetail Range all have those things in common. So we're going to take that 75% dark uh, movement that you're getting and we're going to, we're going to get, create 75% of daylight movement. And, and I know the first thing that you're going to think is I, there's a lot of eye rolling and everything else because I get it. It sounds very unrealistic guys. And I'll be the first one to tell you that because I were in your shoes years and years ago and I just didn't understand the process of what power that we actually have as private landowners to really make a property that promotes daylight movement. It, I was there. That's why I'm able to showcase this stuff to you because guys, I've built my own properties this way. I have clients all over the country that are benefiting from these things and it's not unreachable it's not huge out of reach only uh you know folks with a lot of money in their pockets can do that's what the that's what the thought process is in this industry and in this world is this is great and oh i wish i had a bunch of property and i can't you know i can't pay somebody hundreds of thousands of dollars to come in and build it it doesn't take hundreds of thousands of dollars guys it takes knowledge and it takes effort to put this together for pennies on the dollar to make your hunt way, way, way more productive in the fall. So a couple things we're gonna to touch on here, guys, that, that makes this way more, uh, way more inviting than this. Take 75% of daylight movement versus 75% of dark. And what this is, guys, right here, this red line, if you follow the channel at all, you'll know that that red line is what I promote as the transition. I'm taking all of the movement, I'm tying all of the movements together, and I'm, and I'm not forcing that mature buck, your buck of choice, any deer, I'm not forcing them to have to go into wide open food sources to scent check doe areas. The first thing to remember guys, on, to make a daylight property, a buck is not going to go into a food source, wide open food source, to check where does are at when you're there. The first place he's going to go, he wants to go, right? If he's allowed to go there, the first place he's gonna go, if he is bedded on the neighbors or if he's in the core of your property, the first place he's gonna go is he's going to get this, the wind right and he's going to go scent check where they were. So if you make the availability for him to be in an area, in a spot where you're at, when he wants to be there or when he has to be there to scent check it, he can cruise these areas between the food plots and the doe, or the doe bedding areas, the habitat that you create within that first hundred yard rim of your food sources. He's going to be able to, to scent check the doe bedding and visually see the food plots. So he's using two of his senses and he's and three because he's obviously listening too, right? But he's, he's using the wind at the side of his face He's using his eyes out in the food plot and he's listening to what's going on. He's cruising around that whole property and he's not forced to be, to be forced into food plots. So you'll see these little black lines in here guys and I'll try to zoom in as good as I can. 
I do promote from the like a PM uh, these stand locations. Uh, I do promote a a, uh, a line of travel or a trail that goes off that red line, and that's these little black lines that go out in the food plot. It makes a great intersection, and I'm all about that, right? Being here and being able to let one or two deer pass you and get out of dodge without being touched is way easier than having the entire food plot full of deer that are coming from all over, your neighbors, the inside of your property, your habitat pockets, everything in, putting them in one spot and then trying to get away from them, guys. High pressure deer mentality says, I'm not sticking my face in that food plot with the does. I'm not sticking my, food, my face in that food plot until it's close to dark. What that tells you is, guys, it's a biological trigger that happens in the deer world. I wish I would have had years ago when we had the, uh, when I was in the uh, managing high fence uh, ranches, we would actually have cameras when they first come out, right, years ago, in bedding areas internal of the farm, um, you know, three, four hundred acres, thousand acre pieces, and it would shock you on how much there is a connection to when, a, when does get up to go to feed, you check a trail camera, and back then it wasn't cellular, right? But we'd go pull the cards, and we'd go to that same day, and it would shock you on how much movement, relative movement there is between does getting up and going to food, and a half mile or a quarter mile, half mile away from there, the bucks were on their feet within minutes of, of that. The problem with this, guys, is your does are right here, and your bucks, if the, hopefully they are in the core, right? That's why we're building it this way, to give them a, a chance to be closer. But if they are on the, your neighbors, or, or a federal piece or whatever the case is, uh, and they're coming from a long ways away, it's not that they're not on their feet somewhere during daylight. They're just not on your spot during daylight. And that's the promotion. We want to, to, we want to make it untouched, unpressured, in spots that we can build it so he can cruise. He doesn't have to force himself out into wide open food sources. And at the end of the day, you're able to hunt him in his most vulnerable times of the fall when he's cruising and scent checking. The powerful thing about this, guys, is I think one of the biggest things to realize is a lot of folks think that deer only scent check or only use, um, you know, that sense, if you will, during the pre-rut and rut. And that couldn't be farther from the truth. My property here in, in central Kentucky is a testament to that. Every... If you are training these deer to scent check these habitat pockets, whether li they're living in them, that in living closer in them or not during the summer months, they're walking past them every day. They're scent checking them every day. You are actually training them to, to get the information at the side of their head instead of forcing that information at their nose. Hence the reason I don't believe in give them the wind just hunt because there's no need for it. If your property is set up correctly, and or you're hunting a piece of public ground correctly, there's no need to ever give them the wind. Because if you're giving them the wind in a location, they if you're, you're hunting between or on the, the downwind side of correct habitat bedding, right? You're actually forcing that deer to be on the other side of that creation. It, it doesn't make sense, right? It's a very, very small, small piece of a productive window that you're trying to tap into that sadly never helps folks reach the pinnacle because it's not working for you. You actually think you're gaining by giving them the wind and you're giving them the wind. You're, you're, they are getting the wind, but they're so far out of range that you're not able to do anything about it, right? So you're actually forcing a bad stand location instead of promoting a good stand location make it a high pressure situation for them you're going to have 75 percent dark movement make it easy for them and make it inviting for them low pressured and make it make sense so they want to be there more often as they're there more often you're going to increase daylight movement because as soon as a buck leaves this right here as he dissects it here maybe he can dissect that in five minutes on a 40 acres here, maybe it's taking him because it's all spread out around and he's stopping at the licking branches, he's stopping at the water holes. Maybe it's 25 minutes. It, it sounds minuscule, right? It sounds really, really not, well, 25 minutes isn't a lot of time. Guys, it's four and five times more daylight movement. He's there four or five times longer than he was before. So when he gets done with this, 
and he leaves out on contour and he leaves out on a bleeder, what you'll find is he's running into this. So he's leaving this and he's coming back to this again. So now instead of having him here once a day, you got him here twice a day. And then he comes back in here and he goes to the north. He hits this situation again. He comes back in. He's they, It's a circulation that they seek, right? If they are seeking it, you're going to, if they're able to seek it, your daylight information, your daylight movement on your property is going to go through the roof. 